Hello everyone, I'm Mariah, and today I'm going to be going through some of the new features in Sizeware 10.1. Uh, we will be releasing Sizeware 10.2 quite shortly. Um, we are aiming to release a version of Sizeware every quarter. Um, so the way we're going to be numbering these versions is we've had 10.1, we're going to have 10.2, 10.3, 10.4. Uh, every quarter there'll be a, a new version of that released. So I'm just going to jump in here and we're going to go to the project new where we've changed a couple things here. Uh, so like 10.0, 10.1 .0, uh, can create projects in either a SQL local database type or a SQL server database type. So we are now calling a SQL local database a single user project and the SQL server projects we're going to be calling multi-user projects. Uh, we found these labels just are more descriptive than using the, the, the database types there. Uh, everything else here should be uh, the same as the, the regular importer from 10.0. If we go back to the project, uh, you may also notice we don't have a project attach option here anymore. It's all going to be done through project open. So instead of going to project attach, I'm going to open this a browse option and select the project folder um, of the project that I would have normally attached um, and it's just going to open that up in Sizeware. If I go to our help documents here, uh, you may notice that we now open these in a web browser instead of within the, the Sizeware application itself. Uh, this is because this allows us to update those documents uh, a little bit more easily. Uh, something else that we have changed uh, is uh, we have the options under this well tab. Uh, you may notice we now have something called the well data viewer as well as zones. I'll be going into that a little bit later on, uh, but for now I just want to talk about these import and export by data type. Um, we still do have the, imp the old import and export uh, for any data types um, that we brought in previously, but now uh, using this import by data type, we can now bring in those, those well zones as well as raster logs that are not depth calibrated. Uh, so I'm going to open up an example of a raster log import. You can see it looks a little bit different than our, our old import. Uh, it's a bit uh, more simple. I can bring in files either through this, this add file option that will open a file browser, or we now have the option to drag and drop uh, the file. So you can see that populates uh, instantly there. I can add the well I want to bring this into, give that raster a name and then I can go and add my depth markers. And then since I've picked two points, uh, the rest of them should be interpolated here. So I can move on to the next step here. I can add an edge marker. So if I only want to bring in uh, one track or a portion of this, this log, I can add, add edges on. So I'm just going to bring in this one track. And now that I have everything defined, I can import that. And we can take a look at that in our log editor now. select that well and then we can add in that raster track so it's just going to be added in like any any LAS curve and then if I scroll down here you can see I have that that raster file right there um, it is it doesn't belong to this well but I thought I'd just bring it in as an example here um, and the next thing I'm going to do is go and uh, pick some well tops uh, this is a function we did have uh, pre in previous versions of Sizeware, uh, but uh, many of our clients uh, don't know this feature exists, so I thought I'd, I'd mention it here. Uh, so we can select tops that already exist, or we can put in, put in a new one. So I'm going to call this test2. 
And then I'm just going to pick along here. We can dra drag and edit where we've made those picks. And then when we close out, uh, that's going to save it to the database. And so that's now saved to that well. Something new we have added in Log Editor is if I go and edit a sonic curve and then save it, I now have the option to generate a velocity curve for my new sonic. Uh, I don't have to go into back into well properties and do it from there anymore. I can just do it all from here. Now if I go back to that well tab uh, to touch on uh, those other new features I mentioned earlier, um, we can open up our well data viewer. I'm just going to open up in this other project since there's fewer wells. And we can take a look um, at how this is laid out. We have all these uh, different boxes with different information that we can view it all at once. Uh, these boxes you can you can drag around, you can you can move, uh, you can also turn them on and off, as well as change which columns are displayed. Uh, this is, the purpose of this viewer is to make information quick and efficient uh, to, to view. Uh, this is a work in progress, so we are looking for feedback uh, before we add in any, any new data types. Uh, we want to know what works for you, uh, what data types uh, you want to see, and uh, so on. Now I'm just going to go back to those well zones and I'm going to bring in an example of one of those just so you know uh, what you need to import those well zones. So I'm going to drag and drop just like I did with the raster. And then here you can see that the what we need to define is the UWI uh, the zone name, as well as a top and base depth. This is designed to be a fairly open data type, uh, so I can have other columns with, with different attributes that I can define. So say I have a, a perforations, I can add that in. Um, these values can be numeric, they can be text. Uh, you can pretty much bring in anything as long as it has that, that top and base, base depth, um, and it, it can be defined as a zone. So once I have that, that Manville Viking zone in, I can display it on my base map here. Um, I can turn it on under its, our deviation display so that we can view these, these zones along deviated wells. So I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so we can see what that looks like. Um, so yeah, you see this blue, blue zone from the top to the base uh, of that zone we defined. Uh, something else we can do with these on base map is we can create uh, well ribbons for zone attributes. So we can def uh, display our zone thicknesses. So if you have a zone that pops up several times along a well, it would the zone thickness would uh, show the cumulative value uh, of all those zones. Uh, we can also do zone top and base depth, as well as any of those attributes that we brought in. So I'm going to select zone thickness. Uh, for that Manville Viking. And you can see I have these well ribbons displayed that I can now run quick grid and contour on. And now I have a grid of my uh, well zone attribute. So I'm going to clear these off so I can show you how we can view these in our seismic viewer. So if I'm just gonna, if I open up a seismic viewer here, I can turn on those well zones under the tops tab. So we have this display zones list option now uh, that functions uh, just like the display tops list. You can, you can create a list and then uh, select to display it. So I've turned on a list that has that Manville Viking zone, and you can see it highlighted in blue here. Uh, something else you may have noticed when I opened up that seismic viewer is we have this uh, full-sized uh, color bar scale along the side here. Uh, we thought this uh, would make 
correlating the, the colors you're seeing in your seismic data to the color bar uh, much easier. Uh, something else we can do is we can turn on uh, different color bar increments. So let's uh, change that. So you can make uh, these increments as few or as many as you want. Something else that we are now able to do is we can now view culture in our seismic viewer. Uh, so if you look over on my base map here, I have these brown dashed lines outlining a outlining a channel here. Um, so I'm just going to turn this on in my seismic viewer and you can see these projecting onto my seismic viewer. We can bring in any kind of culture that you see in the base map, we can bring into the seismic viewer now. So something else that we are able to do now is we can change our uh, tracking settings between the two seismic viewers. So you can see I have that, that dashed gray line tracking in the one. Um, I can change these settings, um, such as a style, the color, um, the size. Uh, we also have something it's called XOR. So this is going to allow me to view my tracking line against backgrounds that it may blend into. So it's going to uh, cause uh, the, this tracking line to change to something that's higher contrast uh, than the color I have selected. So if I toggle that on, um, I'll I'm going to change my color to that grayscale just so we can see um, how uh, that tracking line, which I have a set to a color of gray, is going to stand out against the, the grayscale data. So now when I move that tracking line around, you can see it's changing uh, to high contrast colors so that I can always see uh, where those crosshairs are. Uh, so one last thing that I want to show you, it's on our base map. Um, this has been something that has been highly requested and we've also had quite positive feedback about it, um, is we have now have the ability to save our base map uh, as a raster file. So it's going to be a geo-referenced image. Uh, so I'm going to save that here. And now I can bring that into other sizeware projects, such as this one I have here. I only have a few wells uh, that I may want to uh, see the layout of the rest of the wells in the area, or we can bring it into other software suites um, as they handle geo-referenced images. Um, so I'm going to import that through a raster import. Just so I can show you what this looks like. So I can import that and now you can see I have those uh, that image of my, my other base map displaying on uh, this one here. Uh, so that was everything I was planning on going through today. Uh, thank you for watching my presentation. Thanks.